way too hot in here. Hmm, much better now. When I get hot, I ain't looking at the clock, still falling like bra. Yeah, I'm headed to the bus, then I'm falling like yeah. I ain't looking at the clock, still falling like bra. When I get, when I get hot. It's summer once again, and here I'm going to talk about the main issues of having an aquascape during the summer. Now, the main problems are the heat, fertilization, and feeding your fish, especially when you're not home, if you go on a holiday or something. So we're going to go through all this today. Grab a snack. It's going to be a long one. So, we're going to start with cooling and uh, I have a cheat sheet because there's so much information that I would be lost. Now the ideal temperature for an aquascape, water temperature, would be 22-23 degrees Celsius, which in the summer can be a bit challenging to keep. The top limit we usually say for most plants is 25 degrees. Now. If you have an established setup that's been running for months, obviously it can survive one or two weeks of higher temps uh, in a heat wave during the summer. It's probably going to be fine, but uh, in the long run, you should keep the temperature at this level. So the best option would be to have the whole room air conditioned. Obviously, that's the easiest way to keep the tank cool. But if you can't do that, you need to look elsewhere. The worst possible option would be putting frozen bottles of water into your tank or doing regular water changes with very cold water. If you want to know more about why this is a problem, we have a complete other video with summertime issues, which you can find here. Now, in the middle of all this, you can find actual aquarium related solutions for keeping your water cool. One of these are these coolers that you see on the table in front of me. The other type would be chillers. For most aquascapes, chillers are a bit overkill. A chiller can drop your water temp to between 10 to 15 Celsius, um, which is way too much. You don't need that. Um, and this is where the fans come in, which can help you with anywhere between two to five degrees Celsius drop in the water temperature. As you can see, there are a lot of different types and we're gonna go through them all. So I'm going to start with this one. This is the Chihiro's fan. Perfect for smaller tanks, anywhere up to about 60 liters. It does a great job. You can drop two to five degrees in water temperature. Main problem is there are no different sizes. So you only get this one. If you have a larger tank, then obviously this is not for you. But actually with this button where you turn it on, you can adjust it to three different speeds, which obviously means three different cooling power and three different noise levels. This one is on the less noisy side of things, but obviously fans are moving parts and they're pushing air. So there is always some noise with each of these options. Now the second option would be this one, which is the Wave Reef cooler. This is a very simple fan setup. Uh, it's the most noisy one, but it's available in different sizes. So it's good for up to 300 liters with the biggest one. It's nothing special. It gets the job done. Um, it's quite inexpensive compared to the rest, uh, but that shows in quality as well. Now the third one would be the JBL system, which is a bit different than the rest. It has a cross flow fan inside, whatever that means. But if you can, if you look at it, it, it doesn't actually use fans like this one. Uh, there's a big tube um, with some lines on it and that's what rotates. And this one, you can adjust this way and also this way. So I would say this is the most flexible one. 
if you are tight on space, uh, this is a very good option and it's available in two sizes, the 200 and the 300. I would say, well, they say the 200 is good for up to 200 liters, depends on how much you want to cool your tank. The 300, they say up to 300 liters. I would say on the 300, on 300 liters is closer to the two degrees drop. Now, if you would put this on a 60 liter tank, obviously it's way too big visually, but you can get five, six degrees in temperature loss. Now, this goes to all the fans, actually. Uh, if you look at them, there's usually a factory recommendation for the aquarium size they are designed for. But again, if you use more fans on a smaller tanks, you usually drop more temperature. Now, JBL also sells the cool control, which is a thermostat. It has a small sensor that you put into the aquarium and you run the power line of the fan through the controller. And this way you can set it up for working for the exact temperature you want to reach. Actually, this controller works with other uh, fans as well. So obviously it only depends on the uh, connector type. So look around, you might be able to use this thermostat with another type of fan. For example, the Aquamedic one, which is our next to look at. Now this is on the more high-end level. This is where it gets a bit less noisy. Um, it has a very good system where you can use their own thermostat or you can use the JBL thermostat, but it comes with this, which is a separate controller where you can adjust the speed of the fan. This helps a lot with noise. As you start lowering the, um, the speed of the fans themselves, noise can drop drastically, very quickly. And the others can't really do that uh, on their own, except for the Chiros where you can do it step by step. But this has a gradual control, so obviously that's very good. Again, available in different sizes. You can see it on the screen, but I think two fan, four fan and six fan. And then we arrive at the big boy. Now this is top of the line. It has a very, very sturdy construction. And even though other producers have six fan setups as well, the GHL has bigger fans than the rest. Obviously, it matters how big the fan is. And with the GHL setup, even when you buy the two fan version, it has the same fan size. So it moves a lot more air, which means it's much more effective in actual cooling. And it uses very high end fans. So again, that's very good for the noise levels. Very, very important with fans. The way they work is they move the water surface which evaporates the water and that cools down the water now this evaporation can be very very drastic sometimes depends on the size of the fans you use on a certain tank so whenever you are cooling your aquarium with fan setups make sure that you are checking the water level constantly and you refill from time to time it really depends on the setup some people need to refill every day others need to refill once a week in between water changes just make sure you are checking and it can actually vary from time to time so it's not enough to check once when you have your setup running for the first time and you're like oh okay i need to refill once a week if the weather gets hotter or the humidity changes in the room itself it might be different on the next week while cooling setups are for the whole summer doesn't really matter if you're home or not, you're gonna need it if your room is not air conditioned. What comes next is automatic fertilization, which is really handy when you go on a holiday and you want to keep your tank running and if you want to keep feeding your plants with fertilizers. And here we are with all the dozers that we have. Dozers, a lot of people use them on a regular basis, but it usually comes up when you set up your tank and you go away to a holiday for the first time and you're like, who's gonna fertilize my tank? 
it's difficult to trust someone who has no idea about aquascaping uh, with your fertilization routine and obviously they don't want to visit your home every single day while you're not there so this is where you start automating let's start with chihiros once again it's a very small compact unit biggest advantage is that you have the same app to run it as you have for your lights and your CO2 solenoid valve if you are using Chihiros on those products as well. So you don't need to install another app, you can control it from the same thing. Also works with the Wi-Fi hub. So while all the Chihiros products are basically um, designed with Bluetooth, so you can only access them when you are close to them, there's a Wi-Fi hub available separately, which means you can uh, control them even when you're not home. Obviously, you don't want to change your fertilization routine when you're not home. But where this comes in handy is that the unit sends you notifications when you are starting to run low on fertilizers. On the most simple side of things, uh, there is this Jebao, or Jebao, I don't know how to spell it. Very simple one, no uh, app for it, no phone connection. There is a user interface on top with regular old-fashioned buttons, easy to set up, works quite well. This one is Yabao as well, just like this, but this is the newer model with Wi-Fi control, same functions as the Chihiros. All these are, as you can see, four head units. Now this is where Aqua Vitro, which is Seacam's brand, made something quite interesting. This is a primary Sentia dozer, and this one is a secondary unit. What you can do is you buy one primary and then you attach as many secondary units as you want. You can have two, you can have four, you can have 20. Don't know what kind of tank needs 20, but you get the point. And also very good stuff. If you are using Seacam fertilizers, it knows the amounts it needs to dose. So you just tell it that you have like Seacam XL on this one, Flourish on this one, Potassium on the third one, and it knows how much it needs to dose. And there is an extra step. If you measure your water parameters regularly, you can put the amounts in the app itself and it knows what to change. So, for example, you test your nitrate levels, you test your phosphate levels or potassium levels, you put the results into the app and it says, okay, your tank needs more phosphate and it's going to change the fertilization routine for you, which is quite smart. Uh, obviously, it only works with Seacam fertilizers, so there is that limit. You can see that it has different coloring rings. It comes with a bunch of them, so you can actually color code uh, which head has which fertilizer, and you can put the same color for the fertilizer in your app as well, so you can remember which bottle contains what. And another interesting feature, you can see that all the tubes are going down from all this. With the Sentia, you can take it off and put it back on like this. Or actually eight different ways. This can be very interesting if you are tight on space in your cabinet and you want to make sure that all the tubes are going straight without any cracks in them. So yeah, very smart thing. And again, top of the line would be the GHL unit. Uh, usual, very sturdy build quality. This one comes in two versions. Uh, this is a standalone unit and it's also available as a slave unit. So with this one, you use it as any of the rest. It's a dozer, nothing else. The slave unit, it connects 
into your GHL automation system and you can control it through the same as you would control your lights and uh, so on. You can get very confused with GHL very quickly, but it's a very high-end product. There are a few uh, extra items that you can get for fertilizers or dozers, like this uh, container setup from Chihiro's. Obviously, you can put the liquids in any kind of uh, bottles to feed the dozers from, but uh, it's important not to have them in open containers, which would be the easiest because you just drop the hose in the container and it works. But obviously, if your fertilizer is open, it can get spoiled with anything that's around it in the air or even simply dust can just fall into it and it's not going to be well. And for that, these are perfect because the cap on the containers have the small connector for the hose. And then uh, this is something new as well from Red Sea. These are color coded hoses, which they actually have no use at all. But look how cool they look. So that's it. If you just want to pimp up your system, then this is a good way. And they also come with uh, this holder, which actually goes on the side of your aquarium. So it's not just hoses, but it actually leads the hoses into the tank, which is very useful because that's a usual problem with dosing setups, how you actually get the fertilizer into the aquarium. Very, very important for all kinds of uh, dozers. You need to calibrate them for your own setup. So obviously, depending on the distance between the unit and your tank and the height difference and all that, the dosage changes. So you need to teach all these units what 100 milliliter is on your actual setup. So it, you can see in all their manuals, the calibration routine. It's not a recommendation. It's not something that you need to do after one year of use or whatever. You need to do it when you set up your system. It's important. Otherwise you are dosing different than what you think. Oh, and uh, while you are at the accessories like containers and special hoses and so on, these systems run on different hose sizes. So before you buy any accessories, make sure that you check what hose size your actual system uses or the dozer you chose. Check for the hose size because some of them are two by three millimeters. The others are four by six or three by five. So yeah, just like with your external filter where there are different uh, standard sizes, dozers have different standard sizes as well. So make sure you choose the correct products when you purchase your first system. And uh, that's it about automatic dozers. Now we go into how to feed your fish when you're not around. I think the biggest challenge uh, for most people when they go away on a holiday is how to feed their fish. Because for fertilizers, you could just simply pause your aquarium, like turning off the lights, turning off CO2, not fertilizing, and you just give a long relax for your aquarium. But obviously your fish need to be fed. And for that, all these automatic feeders come in. Eheim has three different versions actually. This is the simplest one. You set it up with regular buttons. You can adjust this small door and that sets how much food falls out. Then all this rotates. I don't want to do it by hand because I don't think it does any good to the product. But you can imagine it just turns around, food falls out, that's it. You can set the amount by opening the door and by telling the unit how many times you want it to rotate. Because obviously with all rotations, some food will fall out. Really good is it has active airflow in it. So it has a small fan which circulates air in the container itself, which prevents the food 
from sticking because obviously this is above your water so some evaporation goes into that humidity gets high which could cause the food to stick in one piece now this one is available in a wi-fi edition so basically works the same way but you control it from your phone instead of the buttons on top of it and the third option for Meheim is this one, the Twin Feed. It has two separate holders for two different types of food and two outlets for them. Uh, this comes in handy when you have different types of food that you want to feed your fish. Obviously, if they are the same grain size and so on, you can just mix them in one container. But if you have two completely different type of food for like small fish and bigger fish, it's a different size, then this is very good because you can actually control the two feeding cubes separately. So you can set the amount they push out one by one. That's it from Eheim. They also have this feeding station, which is very handy. You can hang this on the side of the tank, put the feeder on it and there is a plastic container which keeps the food in one place so the water flow from a filter doesn't push the food all around the tank which for some uh, fish it's very good next one would be the jbl which works the same way as the twin feed of the eheim there is a screw inside and that pushes out the food. So it doesn't rotate like the uh, single item Eheim. You just fill it with food and this screw pushes out some of it down here. Now, this one doesn't have active airflow in it like the Eheim ones, but there is actually a connector for a regular air pump. So you can do air circulation yourself in it which again prevents food from sticking all together. Obviously you open this lid and this is where you can fill. But uh, in the package, there is a small adapter. If you apply that, you can actually put a whole can of JBL food on top of it. So you can put on a lot more food and you need to refill it much less. And also for some people, this might be uh, important. It comes in two different colors. So there's the black one and there is a white option as well, while the rest, they come in whatever they do. It's like usually Eheim gray. The last one is the simplest one. This one is an Oase and there is an Eden type as well, which is sort of the same product. These don't have any air circulation. There is no option to do it manually. These are the simplest ones, but again, they get the job done, especially if you only use them for when you go on a holiday. Very important with all the feeders, check what you buy. Uh, some come without power adapters, some come with uh, batteries inside, some come with the holder that you actually need to put it on the tank, others don't, so check the product description every time to make sure that you're gonna have everything you need to actually set the product up on your tank. And also the camera crew just said there's an option of having your grandma feeding your fish. Don't. If you ask anyone to look after your fish, they're gonna probably overfeed them, which means there's gonna be a lot of leftover food in your aquarium, which gonna start to break up in the tank, which gonna cause lots of algae. If you're just going away for a few days, you don't need to worry about any of this. Fish are fine for about up to six, seven days without any feeding. Trust me, they're not gonna have any problems except for some special fish like discus and so on. But most of your regular fish that you keep, they're perfectly fine. And if you need to look after them for a longer time, get a feeder because if you ask anyone, they're just gonna keep them feeding because they looked hungry. As I mentioned earlier, last year we had uh, another video about summertime issues around an aquarium or an aquascape. So go check that out here, right? this corner yes um, and that's it for this week thank you for joining me and see you next time goodbye